Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack and Jill here. Hey there. Welcome to the show today. In this episode, as promised, Jill and I will talk about the power of being debt free. Before we get into it, <laughs> it's like the heavens open up. This is. I, I want to hear what she's going to say about this too. Before we uh, do it, let's take a question posted by one of our members on the landinvestors.com online community. It's free. Okay. Joshua asks, hey guys, I'm working on my second mailer, but this time around, I'd like to get more detailed about my pricing. Nice. I know Jack mentions he still buy, he still prices by the square foot. I'm curious as to the sources used to find land that is sold. I've just been using postlets.com, Redfin for the counties it covers, they and their contract pieces on Landwatch and Lands of America. Mm-hmm. I was planning to mostly consider what sold numbers were, find the average, and then make offers based on those. I'm also thinking about how to break counties down uh, into individual cities and points because obviously some parts of the county, the counties are priced mm-hmm. higher than others. I was going to just do separate spreadsheets if the amounts were way off than other cities in the That's county. That's okay. So we have a member who does that very successfully, I might add. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking, and this is where it gets more fun, some counties I will have to use Agent Pro since they aren't found on, or Title Pro, which we have, that he has, since they aren't found on Parcel Fact, seems to get a little pricey compared to Parcel Fact. Yeah. Any suggested packages for Title yeah, Pro? Yeah, Title Pro. This is, I mean, Joe, this is an, a, a testament to the intelligent members we have. Yeah. And this is an incredibly. Totally. Intelligent question. It I is. mean, this is like master's degree, possible PhD level stuff. Mm-hmm. Price, so, as you know. On his second mail, by the way, he's yeah. already thinking about these things. This is awesome. As you know, pricing is so important. So, and, but so let me super clarify. I only ever use pricing per square foot, for better or for worse, for houses. I never use it for commercial property. I, I only use a cap rate analysis for commercial property. And for land, I use price per acre or price per actual lot, like in the case of movie star ranches. Price per square foot is only for houses. So it sounds like you're buying land, right, Joe? I think he's buying land. Mm-hmm. Totally. There's two ways to, and you're, you're dead on about, there, you're 100% right about, you look at any given county, there's some places it's really pricey, there's some places it isn't. Out west, it has to do with altitude and trees and stuff. Back east, it has to do with what's developed and what's not. So what you want to do is separate that out, and there's a few ways you can do that. You can separate it through a spreadsheet scenario, through APN schemes, I call them. Like, if the APN scheme in the county is 103-33-333, all the property in 103 should be priced at X per acre, all the property in 303 should be priced at Y per acre and so on and so on. You can do this through mapping, which makes it easier for some people. For me, I just like the raw data in a spreadsheet. And you're going to get a lot further faster there. Or you can take the Luke Smith approach and you can just say, trash it all and say, I'm going to offer $500 an acre for the whole, every single property in the county. And, and he, has, he does that with tremendous success. Mm-hmm. I choose to be a little bit more strategic about it. Um, you know, the, the trade-off is that he and his staff get, they get pounded pretty good with the hate, which he doesn't care. And neither do we. For us, we would ra- I would rather do fewer transactions and make more money. And he, he loves to do, I mean, he, I think he recently said on the show, he's got a thousand properties mm-hmm. on his website. Luke does? He has a oh, thousand yeah, properties available, listed yeah. on his website. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's truly amazing. Yep. So without, I mean, Jill and I actually teach a class on pricing. We haven't released it yet. We teach a live class. Uh, and that's all we talk about is, ex- and we get really into detail, much to Jill's boredom. Yeah. <laughs> in fact, I'm not sure you shouldn't even be in that class. I should just Why? teach it. I mean, you can come. Oh, I'm make there it, for you comedic make it relief. Fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like now. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope that answers it. It's probably a little bit long-winded. I think Jill's 
actually doing something else. And that's yep, good. Totally. <laughs> if you have a question or you want to be in the show, reach out to either one of us on landinvestors.com. Today's topic, the power of being debt free. Could you imagine if you can hear the, the show? pages of my magazine churning. <laughs> I, I need a sound effect for that. That Me would too. be actually like kind that. of funny. You know what would be cool? It's like you had an old typewriter. Yeah. And you should just start typing because you're just completely concentrating on something else. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> too funny. Okay. What's this debt-free business all about? Oh my gosh. You know, if you, I'm gonna, before you get into this, and I know you have a lot to say, Tuh. when you go to, when you go to college in a finance class, you know what they say? You should never be debt-free. They say this. Seriously? Yeah. It's not, I didn't have not, that. Not in personal finance, oh. but they say, use leverage to your benefit. Oh. If, you're not, if you're using up all your capital and you're not utilizing oh. your relationships and on and on and on, you're kooks. You know what? I and want I to say share something that's personal a on that. That's malarkey because I don't run General That might be true for General Motors. In fact, it is. Or Amazon. Okay. Or Toyota. But it's not for Jack and Jill. My brother and I had an argument on this. About if you have all the cash. Your brother, the, the yes. state treasurer yes, of Arizona. Yes, we argue you right here, this one. <laughs> Redefines irony. This right. is awesome. Here's an argument that we always had, the same argument. Even though you can pay ha- cash for your house, should you do that? His argument is, oh, no, don't do that. You should be making the payments and writing off those interest payments. Because you, you could use that interest payment money, right? Right. That's always your... I know. The, the gesture that I just made was not allowed on radio. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's why I said, right? You couldn't see it, but you, we all know what it was. <laughs> so that's keeping the G rating, too. So <laughs> anyway, so we all know. But, I, but then, and then Jack and I obviously have a different thing because we believe in paying cash for it and not thinking about it. You know, I don't, I don't need that particular write-off. Okay, so back to where we were. I wanted to paint the picture about... Debt free and not debt free, you know, number one, like, okay, so in yesterday's show, I painted a picture of driving down the road and finding that beautiful boarded up mess that you could, you could, oh, we're going to buy this. It's a back tax situation. I feel it. It's, we're going to make a fortune. Yeah, no, we're not. That's really not how they usually go. And you don't want to waste all your time on that. So, so my pictures today, Jack, do you have your milk in your blanket? Uh-huh. Okay, good. Would you like another cookie? No, I'd like a 69 Camaro. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? Well, I can, I can, you know what? I'm going to paint this into the picture. Okay. Okay. So let's paint the picture of, you want, let's do not debt free first. So here's your not debt free existence. You have a job you have to go to every day. Why? Because you need that paycheck. And it's a, it's a flat, you know, every Friday or every other Friday or every month, whatever your pay period is, you're going to make X amount of money. And you know of that paycheck, okay, this percentage is going to go to my mortgage. This percentage is going to go to my car payment. This percentage, this is going to go to food, groceries, whatever. And if I'm lucky, I have a little bit to go in the college fund. I didn't pay the college fund the last two months in a row because we needed it. Oh, and my wife has a vacation plan. How the heck we're going to pay for this? I mean, this is your non-debt-free normal existence. Tell me, Jack, am I right? Am I wrong? Yeah, I think it's actually your sugarcoating, and it's a lot worse than that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's your story. Feel free to add in. Okay. You want to you okay. add into this one? or Okay. Oh, and then, by the way, you're, you pray that nothing comes up like, don't, you know, the kid breaks a leg. Okay, great. These are medical bills I wasn't planning for. You forgot uh, $45,000 of tertiary oh, credit card debt. Oh, we forgot about the credit card debt. Thank you. You're right. I was and painting the, an even. And the hole in the roof over the garage. Thank you. That we've been staring at, wondering how mm-hmm. we're going to repair that, too. This is is non-debt free and you know what you're trapped you really are kind of trapped you want to go to a different job you want to make some changes you want to be your own boss you can't you can't afford to do that right now you're kind of stuck okay now imagine you're debt free you have all the money you every paycheck how whatever comes you're debt free with a day job let's even start there debt free with a day job is not a bad existence every dollar you get is going to the bank and you did the roof you did the roof a month ago because you had the money you saved up the three months before and just paid for it. Big deal. Kid breaks a leg. That's okay. That's fine. You don't have the credit card debt. You want it. To, you know what's interesting too? You want to take a trip. Your wife wants to go on vacation and you have a budget for it. And you know what? You don't go crazy. When you're not debt free, I don't know about you, Jack, but this is how I think. Being not debt free, I make totally different decisions because I want to... 
the money that keeps growing in the bank, I like seeing that money. This is how we are now in our lives right now. I'm I'm even greedier. It's kind of funny. When greedier. It's all, I if that's I don't know if that's the right <laughs> term, but I like to see the bank balance going up. So that's what much every man so. wants to hear his woman say, "I'm even greedier." <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That I, I don't want to, I don't want to take that. I'm like, all right, well, maybe we'll do one trip, but I don't want to do two trips. You know what I mean? I do things a lot differently. And you know what? Man, when you're debt free, you sleep really well at night. Now imagine being this situation. Not only are you debt free, but you have a lot of, like for us, you have assets paid for to fall back on. I'm going to pretend I'm 14, okay? Okay, ready to go. Aunt Jill. Yep. Why? Well, you're, you're totally right. Why, what hap- why do you have so much debt? Why do I have so much debt? I, why, yeah, why do you have $30,000 of credit card debt? What the heck? Uh, it wasn't my fault. You know, it was know, just the market took a I dive want, and it wasn't my fault. I'm 14 years old and I want you to be happy. <laughs> oh, I am did, happy. What happened? How did it get all this way? I'm a, I am happy, Johnny. Here, I'll pay for that with my visa. Well, here, let me put my visa down for your ice cream. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> what kind of crap is this? Johnny. You know that Johnny, you asked the right question. Okay. Here's the answer. I'm like, well, how should I answer it? I wasn't sure where you were going there. Uncle Jack's going to step in and okay, thank give you. some voice of reason Angel's here. just going to go cry. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know if, I don't know if our listeners are confused, but I sure am. <laughs> I don't know what... It it's all sad. starts, all starts, in my opinion, all of it, with a mortgage, and probably one that you can't afford. And I think some, it gets before the mortgage. Some type of vision, whether you're, this is not gender specific by any stretch, some type of vision of a car that you define yourself by, or a house in the neighborhood that you think is right, and a mortgage broker telling you, oh, no, you can afford way more than that. It all starts with some version of putting the cart before the horse instead of paying off your education or getting additional education if you need it or making good investments and and all of that and you have to have some type of plan people who are in the situation in general that jill just described never had a plan or they had a plan and it got sidetracked by the person that they um, chose to be their mate in life you know their priorities changed because they took on the responsibility of trying to please somebody in their life. I'm, I'm just about done with a book on all of this. I thought you were just about done with a story. <laughs> Sorry. So, I mean, that's the, that's the truth. You just don't have a plan. Mm-hmm. You know what I think too, but let me, let me back up. Where does this start? I think it even starts earlier nowadays. Come on, you cannot walk on a college campus at a freshman and not see a Citibank table they're staring at you and here sign up and you get a free t-shirt that should be illegal seriously I've even seen the stupidest campaigns like like newspaper delivery I mean this was like you're not even not that many years ago but a few years ago like oh you get a free newspaper subscription maybe it's a magazine subscription by signing up for a credit card dumbest thing on the planet you don't want to do that. You know what else, too? Everyone is brainwashed. Um, and, and I've had this conversation with number one, that you have to have a credit card because you have to start building up your credit score and your credit history. So I honestly think that that's a lot of where it starts right there, that that everyone's brainwashed. And I'm on the Dave Ramsey team, that this whole credit score thing is a bunch of baloney. It is. We're not, not every country does this. We're one of the few countries that do this. I don't think do any this. of them it's ridiculous. do. ridiculous. Thank you. If you don't have the money, you don't have the money. That's it. <laughs> Just like caveman times. It's dumb, and you shouldn't have to. You shouldn't have to be walking around. You, your 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 net worth or your worth is not should not be tied to your credit score. But in a lot of ways, it is. If I mean, you say, "Oh, I've got a 750 versus I've got a 550," it's ridiculous. Here's the good news in all this. What do you have control over in your life? Your time. I don't care who you are, unless you're. I don't know. I guess preteen your parents have control over that and that's that's usually unfortunate also but you have control as an adult of your time you and if you don't you have to really look in the mirror and, and figure that out there's something wrong maybe a boss is controlling it or a spouse or uh man maybe a, a the litter of children that you chose to have before you, before you were a certain age if that's the case you really really have to get control 
over how that's all being managed and run or you're not going to clear out your finances. So this financial thing, this lack of debt free, I don't know if this is how you wanted this show to go. It's is, is all a result. I like of, it to flow it's just however a, it's a result. it flows. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well said. Thank you. The, you know, the, this financial strapped situation that, that we've all been there, by the way, I've been there, mm-hmm. is a result of not addressing something else in your life. It, and as, it's just a result. It's not a, you didn't, no one chooses it. It just happened because some other stuff happened that caused it, or you allowed it to happen. So, yeah. Just true. The title is perfect. You know, you want power. We all want power, right? Mm-hmm. It's just even if it's just over the decisions that we make on a day-to-day basis, we all want that. Well, if you don't have, to, if money's not, if you're not thinking about money any longer, Jill and, Jill and I are decades into this. And you're right, Jill. You start to make really good decisions. Like, that is my point. We started Land Academy. We were in that situation. We started uh, the, doing the show. That was my whole number that. three point, and I'm gonna I want to circle back around, but you're just I'm gonna cover this too because you topped on it. When you are debt free, different decisions are possible. That is huge for me, and I tell this to new people just you know it's all, you know just in Land Academy. They're like I don't have much money. I I, I really want to do this. Okay, all right, that's okay. Start small. Flip this. Flip this. Okay, now you have fifty thousand dollars in the bank now, and now you can make some different decisions. Ah, I get that. People understand that. But um, I want to come back to how, how do you get debt free? So here, here's the reality. We all know the good. We all know what it's like to be not debt free. And we know what it like it is. Well, we don't all know it, but, but we're painting the picture what it's like to be debt free. So how do you get there? And what's one of the biggest obstacles? I think the number one os- obstacle that I hear, Jack, is that people's partners are not on the same page. That's what I think. And that has to be ad- addressed first because one of you, if one of you is rolling along and making your lunches every day, you know, uh, suggesting we eat in, um, s- selling your car and getting a paid for a couple thousand dollar car that runs, but that way you don't have any car payments. If you're not both doing that, that could sink the ship. It won't, it's, it's next to impossible to get debt free unless you're on the same page, number one. And then number two is you got to do all those steps. Like I was just talking about, you got it. You're just going to have to, and I, 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 I'm, I know it's coming out that I am a Dave Ramsey fan and I am a Dave Ramsey fan on this stuff, but I mean, he, he's right about, you got to make decisions for you, not what the society tells you. Like, me I thought we were supposed to buy a house I thought we were supposed mm-hmm. to have a mortgage because that's that's what everybody did you know and that was weird if you didn't have a mortgage and it meant you were grown up if you had a mortgage no it doesn't you could be yeah that's right you could be you rent- you're grown up yeah if you have a mortgage and a car payment that. you're a grown up no you're not you could be you could raise a perfectly good family renting a house you know forever for a long time or forever and have everything paid for and until you know the rent a house you could rent a house raise your kids the whole time until you have enough money to pay cash for your retirement house or pay cash for something if you're worried about other what other people think or your kids what, what your kids think or what your kids friends think or any of that just tell them you own it and forget it mm-hmm. that's it exactly so I, there's a chapter in my book called it's not what you give in life that matters it's what you give up so that's you know you can justify buying a, a, a house that you can't afford for a million reasons. Oh, my kid needs to go to this school. Um, you know, I there's a it'll make my wife happy. It'll or make my husband shut up. He's gonna finally get the garage that he's dreamed of, or all that stuff. Let me tell you something. Nine times out of ten, it's cheaper to rent do, dollar for dollar, and I mean like every month. It's cheaper to rent than it is to uh, buy. It's cheaper to rent a house and save the money that you would have put in in repairs and in uh, all the stuff that you would do to it and everything else, save it, make a bank account, literally. Mm-hmm. If it's through $300 a month, put it, it's amazing how fast that, put the balance is there. Mm-hmm. And then put 50% down on a house and, uh, you know, you're way ahead of the curve there. Or buy a, a cheaper house for, you know, mm-hmm. 100% without a mortgage in a few exactly. years. Exactly. I did a whole technical paper on this. It doesn't make sense to have a mortgage where you put like th- 5 or 10% down. It does. I'm sorry. It does not make sense. The only time it makes like sense—three percent, even now. The only time it makes sense is that you're pretty darn sure the house is going to be worth way more five months later. And you see that in California a lot. So right. there's there's different markets are different, but California's a, its own market. Southern California, I mean. Right. 
then it's a business decision. Right. Not a not an, not an emotional decision. And that's good. Those financial decisions. So I guess the thing is, I just want to make everybody think and, and, and remind everybody the power of debt free and how well you sleep at night and the different decisions you can make, you know, and, uh, and, and, and just think, get everybody on the path of thinking of getting there. It's not so what if it takes five years, by the way, Jack's really good at spreadsheets. If you're not good at spreadsheets, learn. <laughs> really? Seriously. Wow, I didn't think you were going to say that. Yeah. Well, oh. I you thought know. you were going to say, if you're not good at spreadsheets, find what you're, I thought it was going to all. Oh, <laughs> touchy feeling. Find what you're good at. It's just what you're good at. And, That's okay. And you'll be fine. You'll do your best. Cause, no. Because the sun's shining out of your bottom. Oh, today. no. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm so past that. Look, <laughs> come on. Yes, I am the philosophical one more. Not always. You are too, but I am more that. But you know what? There, maybe this is Jack running off, rubbing off on me. Maybe this is me growing up or a combination of the two. You know what? There are times that, golly, Jack, you are right. And there's times that people need to be told, shut up and suck it up. And you need to do that and get your head uh, and go on the right path and make these changes, get debt free, live you, God, it's going to pay off. I think, Jill, the, to wrap it up, I mean, the, and I know exactly the point that you're making, Jill, and you're right. When you're debt-free, you think different. We would have never started Land Academy or any of these products and or right. tools if we weren't, if we were worried about making money, uh, buying and selling real estate. Bingo. And that's not, that's a direct and positive universal result when you take money out of the equation, you start making really good decisions, in my opinion. I think a lot that rich people get a bad rap for being mean, and and uh, I, I think it's all, good all fi- fiction. The most wealthy people I know are the nicest people and most philanthropic people I've ever met. I have a funny story Go ahead. to share on that. We can, we can close on this, too. <laughs> it's my yacht club story the other day. <laughs> oh, no, there we go. The truth comes out. <laughs> I would Jackson every... People think rich people are mean. So (laughs) I did that on accident. I was accidentally mean because I was really bad. So, uh, okay, if I share this story, I have to now. Okay, so wait, I won't make it too long. So I won't bore everybody. So. Jack and I recently joined a yacht club. It's, we all talked about the boat because you get a better slip. There's a lot of advantages and there's reciprocal things when you have a boat and you can go to other yacht clubs and you can park your boat for free. So it all makes sense. There's a financial cool reason to do this. So anyway, we joined the yacht club and they forgot to call us to let us know the night that there's like a little announcement made at the meeting and they hand you the flag called the Burgie and make a deal about it and you get to stand up and everything. Well, they forgot to call us and I really kind of want to be part of that event. Jill wanted to get her Oscar I did. I did. She wanted I to accept her award. Did. I was like pretty proud of that. So anyway, so I was, we went in the next day and, you know, and whatever, we found out we missed it. And, uh, and I, and I was not especially nice to the people at the front desk about it. So, Which is totally unusual for you. Right. Jack's like, Geez. We got out of there and I'm like, what the heck was exactly. that? Exactly. I'm like, well, you know what? They didn't even apologize. Nobody said we screwed up. They just passed the blame on, well, <laughs> Susie's supposed to do it. And she's on her honeymoon in Mexico and she's late getting back. I'm like, is that my problem? So I was not really happy about it because I was missing that. So what was really funny was I was relaying this story to number one and number one uh response was because i felt bad i said you know what should i apologize what should i say she goes oh no don't even worry about it it's a yacht club it's expected of you (laughs) (laughs) she's right i thought that was so funny (laughs) she's like oh you're supposed to be a snob and i'm like okay well i'm just gonna which i'm not that's not how i roll but I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to leave it alone. <laughs> that's, that's that. So anyway, I don't know how we get off on that Now thing. more than ever, I need to read this sentence. Oh my gosh. Join us in the next episode <laughs> where we discuss the number one way to buy any piece of property. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I drug that out. And we answer Julian's question about liability insurance estimate. Mm. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Okay, sorry. I just thought that when you said the people get a bad rap, it made me think of me and how I did 
that and it was I'm I accidentally contributed to the stereotype in a bad way. It's important to know that it, it's there's power in being debt free. That's really what it was about. Thank you. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We are Jack and Jill, and this was the Cash Flow from Land Show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.